Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, just decided I'm going to bring a passion of mine and make a short video each week and talk about uh, rugby league, NRL. Um, as I said, it is a passion of mine and I wanted to start sort of showing that side of things. It's a good way to create some talk and um, please leave some comments, things like that after the video and create some more talking points for future weeks. Uh, just to talk about last night's game, first of all, Dragons and the Broncos. I tell you what, watching this game, I didn't rate the Dragons as much as I did. They didn't really start very well for seasons, and we've seen it in the past, especially last year, where they were top of the comp for a long time there, and they faded away to not even make the eight. Um, they've they've got a very good mix, I think, this year. I think Ben Hunt's a great um, addition to the team. They've got James Graham, who for mine is one of those guys you just will need on your team. He's going to be one of those ones that he'll go in down the trenches with him. And he'll make sure things happen, and he just doesn't stop. He's an absolute workhorse, and I think the Dragons have great, great signing in James Graham. The Broncos, for mine, I think they've got a lot of issues. I think that even before last night, uh, the Broncos of old wouldn't have signed a player, say, like Matt Lodge. I think that speaks volumes of their club at the moment. They've lost their chief playmaker in Ben Hunt, and Bennett decides to replace him with a controversial forward. So, um, for mine, their halves aren't halves that are going to win you a premiership, and probably not even come close to winning a premiership. So, be interesting how this year goes for them. I don't see him, as I said, doing much, and I don't think you can start a game with Dada as your hooker. He's not a hooker, he's not a ball player. Frankly, he's on his last season, and he's a probably a reserve forward at best at the moment. So, um, it's going to be an interesting year. I don't know if Wayne Bennett has it anymore. I think maybe his time's passed as, a, as much of a good coach as he has been. I think it's time for him to start maybe focusing just on, say, England, International Rugby League, and going from there. And the first game tonight, uh, Knights versus Manly. Tell you what, I think this one's going to be a good game. I see a packed Newcastle, really, really a town looking forward to their football this year. And after three wooden spoons, it's fantastic to hear that that's going to be almost a sellout up there. So pretty jealous I won't be up there. It'll be a great atmosphere. But I can see him doing a good job here tonight, Newcastle. And uh, manly for mine, I think the fact that they haven't really replaced Blake Green is a bit of a worry. Um, I think he did a lot for them last year, and you just see that, for mine, Cherry Evans plays better when he has that other chief playmaker who helps organise and run the show and lets Cherry Evans do sort of a bit more of the running game, where I think these days it's going to be Cherry Evans organising most of it, and I don't think he plays as well when he has to do that. Um, it'd be interesting though, a lot of raps on Croker at the moment from a lot of the Manly fans, and be interested to see how he goes tonight. Uh, you can't discount them though. They've got Jake Trebojevic, Tom Trebojevic. Still got a, quite a handy team on paper. Um, I've got the big leg, hence why I keep looking down to have a look at the lineups. Um, it's going to be a good, good effort, and it's going to be a game I see the Knights probably coming away with it by about six to eight points. It's going to be a close one, as I said, but I think the home crowd early season, um, the addition of Pierce for mine is massive for them. Um, you've got a guy who has had a lot of pressure in the last few years. Um, personally, I don't think he is a New South Wales halfback anymore, um, but I do think that going away from that Roosters sort of pressure of delivering a premiership each year to going now to the Knights where a mid-table finish will be him being treated like a king up there, I think that's very much exactly the sort of thing he needs at the moment, just to get back to playing footy and enjoying it. And I'm very, I'm looking forward to tonight's game. So I think that's going to be an absolute cracker up there at Newcastle. But as I said, I think Newcastle will buy about eight points. And um, you got the next game. I think this is match of the round. Uh, you got the Cowboys and the Sharks. They think the Cowboys are going to win the comp this year. I think you take their team who got to the grand final last year and you add Thurston, you add Scott, and then you add 
uh, Jordan McLean as well. That's a massive, massive ins for me, and that's a team for mine that I think is going to win the comp quite, quite comfortably. Um, well, the Sharks, but for mine, I have them also probably sitting in my top five. I have them about fifth. I see them as a team that can really match Cowboys, especially at the start of the season. Like, I go on about the, the Cowboys side and all the great additions, but they've also got to gel and get back into the game. And as great as a player as Thurston is, I think he'll have a couple of weeks just to get back into that grind um, of NRL football. So I think it's probably a good time for the Sharks to get the Cowboys or for any team to get the Cowboys at the moment before they fully gel. Um, I see that, as I said, the Cowboys winning. Uh, but it won't buy that much. I think this will be a very close game, two to four points in it. Um, as I said, I think it's a match of the round. And I've got both teams in and around that top four. So I think this is going to be a classic game. And make sure you, you watch it tonight. And it's going to be a great game of rugby league. The first Saturday game, you've got the Tigers and the Roosters now. This is my smoky game of the week. I actually give the Tigers quite a hope in this game. Uh, some probably call me a bit crazy, but the Roosters for mine with a couple of big name signings, as I just mentioned before with the Cowboys, they've they've got a gel. A um, lot of lot of pressure on the Roosters this year. If basically if they don't make the grand final, it's a failure and they don't win it really. And that's a big anything can happen really in twenty six rounds and uh, twenty five rounds and a couple of finals games, anything can really happen but it's no doubt, on paper, they've got a very good team, the Roosters. I think a couple of injuries to the forward forwards, though, we'll see them start to struggle. They're quite thin in the forward pack this year for mine. Um, but we'll, we'll see. The Tigers, for mine, they've, they've got that many new players. It's not a Tigers of old. You can't judge that. I've rate Ivan Cleary very much as a coach. I think he's done a lot. Um, he's what, the only coach for the last 10, 15 years that have been able to coach the Warriors to a successful season, really. So... To, for mine, that speaks volumes. I like the Tigers. I really like their Tigers this year. They're probably my dark horse this year. Not saying they'll generally win the comp, but I can see them being around that top eight area, uh, maybe a 10th to 7th sort of finish for them. And I think we're going to see a very exciting style of play by them this year, a lot of attacking football. And you can tell by the signs. A player like Reynolds, you just know he's going to be playing for the full 80 minutes. I don't necessarily rate him as a playmaker. I don't know if he's best at that. I think he's a, probably a hooker still. But his, the way he plays the game is, I think, will typify how the Tigers play this year. They won't give up. They might be down by 20 at one stage, but they'll keep going. They could always almost be up by six, ten minutes later. So um, it's going to be a very exciting game. As I said, I, look, I do see the Roosters still winning tonight. Uh, Saturday night, but I don't think it's going to be by as much as a lot of people are saying. I'd say the Roosters by about 10. First, the double header at the new Optus Stadium, Perth. I'll tell you what, I wish I was there. It's going to be a great game. Uh, you got the Rabbitohs up against the Warriors. I think a lot of people are starting to talk up the Rabbitohs this year. Um, personally, I don't really see it. I don't. I, I think they've got a decent team. Um, once again, I think there are a couple of outside backs a bit short, um, but and their bench for mine is a bit um, light on in their bench. So you've got the Warriors, who honestly you don't know what to say about the Warriors at the moment. They they could come out on say a night and win by thirty, but they could also lose by thirty. It's just the type of club they are at the moment, and no one will ever tip them, especially at the start of the year, with any confidence. So that's not going to be me either this year. I'll be tipping the South. Um, but Tim and South by probably 12 to have a start interesting how Inglis comes back from his um, knee injury always hard to come back that first couple of rounds and uh, there's been talk he'll be back to fullback once he's fully fit I think his best position now should be centre and I think he should stay there that'll give him a couple more years in the top grade and he's a strike centre he'll definitely get a lot of ball still and I don't think South will lose anything by not having him there at fullback the other game on the doubleheader, you've got the Dogs and the Storm. Uh, for mine, I think even Storm without Billy Slater, you've got Munster going back, you've got Riley Jack back will go to 5'8". It's a very it's a young rookie halves for the Storm you know, in Jackson Croft, but 
they're just one of those outfits that just keep going, don't they? It's very hard to ever tip against the storm, so I won't be doing that today. I'll be tipping the storm. Um, I'll probably be tipping the storm to win by about 10. The dogs for mine, I still don't... I still don't see him doing too much. I know the signing of Foreign and Woods um, have come in. Uh, it's going to be interesting where Foreign's at mentally. It's been a tough few years for him, and in, even his body-wise, a lot of injuries have happened. And see how they go as a as a team as a whole. Dean Pay is a lot, of, a lot of people have been saying he's a good coach. It's a good move forward for the Bulldogs, and we'll we'll see how they go. I don't see him doing too much this year. I'd have him probably in the bottom four sort of sides this year. Let him have one more year, get some more of these youngsters, especially in the forwards, younger players up and see how they go. They've got Marshall's brother, Jeremy Marshall King, coming in off the bench. Um, apparently a lot of a lot of talk has been about this kid he can play. Apparently better than what Benji was as a kid. So... A lot of, lot of talk on him. It'd be interesting to see where he comes on and plays, if he gets to give um, Leacher a, a bit of a break on the bench or not. But, yeah, it's, it'd be a good, good game, I think. I don't think it'll be a runaway scoreline at all. And But as I said, I do see the Storm winning and Storm winning by about 10 or so. so. The first first game on the Sunday, you've got the Battle of the West, the old Penrith Panthers and the Parramatta Reels. So... Obviously, a little bit of bias coming in here. Uh, try not to be as biased as I can. I think this is one of the games of the round. Uh, Pat's house of, at Penrith has just been announced, so it's going to be an absolute cracker game to be at, um, which I shall, shall be. It's going to be interesting. You've got a lot of things being set out west at the moment about Phil Gould, Anthony Griffin, what's going on in the club, and always when there's smoke, there's fire. And for mine, Panthers are probably a bit of a club at the moment with a bit of pressure on them, which is danger signs. I don't like playing clubs with this sort of um, danger signs there at a, as, at a club level. It's going to show what they are about as a club on Sunday, how they come out. Uh, you can just see if they get beat by 30, uh, which I don't think is going to happen. It's going to be headlines for the next week, two weeks, about Anthony Griffin, Phil Gould, so... On paper, the Panthers have a very good side still. I think they've got probably the origin halves um, in Maloney and Cleary. Personally, for mine, I think maybe Cleary's starting a little bit too early for origin. Maybe give him another year or so. But if you believe all the media and the hype at the moment, these two are probably the New South Wales half and 5-8. It's going to it's gonna be a good game. It's going to be a great game. Um, my club, Parramatta, with... For mine, we've probably got the strongest all-round roster we've had in a good 15, 20 years. I think this is a very good, good side that we've got. Um, it's also, like we haven't got the the King Gutho back on the side yet, but even with without him, you just look at the back line for mine is one of the strongest back lines at the comp. Our halves in Norman and Moses still up and coming, especially Moses, but I'll tell you what, after that World Cup and how he's been playing, I'm very excited to see how he comes out here, and I think he deserves to be in the frame for New South Wales, necessarily if it's ready yet, I'm not too sure, but it's going to be it's going to be a really good game, I see, I've got to tip Parramatta, I've got to tip Parra, I'm going to say Parra by eight, but honestly, I could see this game going either way, and it's going to be an interesting game, so... No, obviously, no, uh, Hayne's back, the Hayne, the Hayne plane. Hayne plane's back, which is going to be good. Good for the club. For mine, I think he's going to have a good year. Uh, a lot of people have been saying, can he come back and have a Dally M year? He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to, especially come playing at centre. He just needs to come back, have his one or two flashes of brilliance each game and stick solid in defence, which I think he, he will. And we'll see probably a, a, a very good year from the Hayne plane. Uh, a lot better than what we have seen the last year or two. And... You could just tell he hasn't been happy where he was at the Titans. He's back home, and I think he's going to have a, a very good season. And I think he's going to lead Parramatta to a, a top four sort of spot, and it's going to be a great year. So Parramatta for mine by about um, eight, and but be be watching Shannon Island because it's going to be a cracker. Another Sunday game, the last game of the round. Uh, it's the Titans and the Raiders. Tell you what, 
this is a hard one to tip for mine. It's probably one of the hardest tip all, all weekend. I see a lot of people are talking up the Titans this year, I've seen. I don't necessarily agree. I have the Titans finishing as wooden spooners. Um, for mine, the team just still isn't quite there as a whole. I think they've got a couple of good changes they've got there. Um, but for mine, they've still got a couple of those players in that outfit that just aren't quite premiership winners or top eight contending players. So the Raiders, for mine, I don't know what happened last year. I don't think many did. They've still got basically the nucleus of the same team for the last three years. Whether that's going to be a good thing or not, we're about to find out um, for the first few weeks. If you're, if you're a rugby league player, if you're a sports player, after the year that they had last year and the expectation, you're hurting. You've got to come out in the first couple of weeks and really show that you guys want to play. Uh, you're a successful side and you want to go back to where you were. They should have been a top four team last year. And for whatever reason it was, um, rumours of Ricky Stewart being quite intense, um, whether or not people are going to believe that, um, that's up to personal opinion. But I think the Raiders win this. I think the Raiders come out on Sunday and have a have a win. And I think the Raiders win by about eight. But it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, I'll be watching this with keen interest to see how both teams are. Especially with the addition now of Bryce Cartwright for the Titans after his uh, whatever has happened at the Pen- Penrith Panthers, so it's going to be a good game. Now, just before before I sign off, uh, just quickly give my tips for uh, well mainly to say a top four. I've got the Cowboys first. I've got the Roosters in second. I've got Parramatta at third, and I have got the Storm in fourth. Um, I think most people have that. Basically, there's top four chopping and changing positions. I think it's going to be, though, a very close year. I can see any, even throw, say, a team like the Sharks in. Uh, and for mine, my underdog or Smokey, for the, for not necessarily as the premiership, would be the Tigers. For some reason, I just like what the Tigers are doing. I really rate Ivan Cleary as a coach. I see a lot of positives coming at the Tigers at the moment, and... I think if any any if they can get into the top eight, that's a very very good year for them. Um, but yeah, as I said, thank you once again for listening. Um, just going to do these once every week. Just talk a bit of footy, and from now on, we'll probably have a bit more talking points, not just about the games coming up, but anything that people want to comment on, we'll bring up and talk about in the next video. But thanks for tuning in. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think of it. Any suggestions, any ideas, feel free to put them forward. But thanks for listening.